your photos are basically useless if you don't have an easy way to find them. So today we are going to talk about one of the least fun, the least sexy, but arguably the most important part about maintaining a photography archive, and that is metadata. But first, it's a new year, and with a new year comes a new intro. Dropping now, let's go! <laughs> See, I like that because it makes me look a lot cooler than I actually am in real life. But let me know what you guys think. And hey, thanks for stopping back in the channel. So I get a lot of questions about metadata. This is a topic that a lot of people ask me about, so I figured I'd make a video and hopefully you guys will find this helpful. So thinking about metadata, what is it and why should you use it? Well, I'm gonna go back to one of my stupid analogies that I do from time to time on this channel. So let's say you and the boys are hanging out and you wanna do Taco Tuesday night, but you don't have any of the ingredients, you need to go to the store. Well, being the boys that you are, you don't really go to the store quite so often, you have no clue where anything is. Well, luckily everything there is organized perfectly for you. You've got aisles that are labeled with the food that's in there. And then within the aisles, you've got sections that are labeled even further. So for Taco Tuesday, you need to find the international aisle. Then within the international aisle, you need to go to the Mexican section, and then you need to find your beans, your rice, your salsa, your tortillas, all that good stuff. Then before you know it, you're back at home making tacos with the boys. So that in a nutshell is what metadata is like, sort of, just go with the analogy. But in this video, I'm gonna take you guys through the basics of metadata, kind of explain what it is and how and why it's helpful. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you a live demo of how I use my workflow to incorporate metadata when I'm editing and storing and archiving photos. So let's jump into it. What exactly is metadata? Well, in its simplest form, metadata is a set of data that gets applied to every and any photo that you take. And it contains all kind of great relevant information about the photo. And the great thing about metadata is that it can be applied to your file and it gets transferred and goes along with that image file no matter where it gets moved to or where it gets distributed to. So basically it's like an ID tag for your photos. Now, when it comes to building out metadata for your photographs, really there are three main categories of data. The first is descriptive, and that's the information about the actual content of the image. So this is the important stuff, the caption, the who, the what, where, when, why, any persons, locations, companies, products, or anything else that's shown within the image goes in this descriptive category. And then you have the rights category. This is another super helpful use for your metadata. And this is what allows you to identify who the creator is. And most likely that's you, the photographer. And also any copyright information, mandatory credits that need to be used, any sort of model rights or releases, property rights, or any other specific usage information that might be helpful later on for that image. And finally, you've got the administrative data. And this is also very, very helpful for things like the date the image was created, instructions for end users of the photo, and any other relevant details related to your archive. All of this information is key to smoothing your workflow and easily finding your image via search, either whether that's in your own finder on your machine or within any sort of online archive that you or your organization uses. I'm a photographer, I wanna take pictures, I don't wanna write captions and fill out a form with all of this writing. All right, I hear you, I get it, but hear me out. Metadata is super, super important for a couple of reasons and it's an essential skill that all photographers should have. Now the first reason is think of your archive, your images that you've shot over the course of your career as that grocery store, right? Whenever you wanna go in there, thankfully everything is organized by sign for you and you can find stuff pretty easily. But think about if those signs weren't there, you would have no clue where anything is. And that's kind of how it is when you start to build up an archive. You have shot so many images that you just don't know where exactly everything is and you need this descriptive metadata in order to find what you're looking for and pinpoint the exact location very quickly and very efficiently. Now here's another reason. Any professional organization that uses photography in any way, whether that's a newswire, a newspaper, a sports team, a magazine, or any other type of company that uses photography is using metadata in some way, shape, or form. 
And the reason for them doing that is because they're dealing with such a large volume of photos day in and day out. Sometimes thousands of photos every single day going into their archive. And so they need a way, a system to keep it all organized and be able to find what they need in a very quick and efficient manner. Now here's the thing you probably haven't thought about. If you are looking to get hired by one of these companies, they are going to most likely require that you know or have knowledge of metadata and how to use it and how to apply it to their photos. Each one of these companies has their own template that they use to organize their photos when it comes to metadata. And they expect that you're gonna know how to use metadata and how to work with their filing system to get them the photo they need so that they don't have to spend the time on their end adding the captions, adding the keywords, adding that important info. So it is an essential skill for photographers. I think it's one that gets overlooked, but you have to learn it. It's just as important as learning how to shoot is how to caption and how to properly use your metadata. How do I actually use metadata? Okay, well, here's the high level overview. And then as this video goes on, we'll get more in depth and I'll show you a more specific example of how to use it. So metadata takes the form of what's called an IPTC template. An IPTC stands for International Press Telecommunications Council. But basically, this is just a fancy way of saying it's this group of people that came together to develop a standard for information that can be embedded into a digital photo. So basically just think of your IPTC stationary pad as a pad of paper that gets stapled or paper clipped to your photo that contains all of that photo's relevant information. Now you can make a metadata stationary pad in a variety of programs. You can actually use both Photoshop or Lightroom to do this and they make it super easy. But the program I use is called Photo Mechanic. Now, Photo Mechanic is kind of the industry standard for adding metadata, and it's used by photography organizations across the world. So the reason so many professionals use this program is the ease with which you can apply metadata to large volumes of photos and quickly sort through thousands of images without a hitch. This is not a free program, but it is relatively inexpensive. There are a couple different versions you can buy, starting with a license at $139. And just important to note, this is not an annual subscription. This is just a one-time license key, a one-time purchase to buy the program. Now I've got the link in the description below for you guys if you are interested. I highly recommend you check it out. Definitely worth it. So once you're into Photo Mechanic, all you have to do is go to Image Metadata IPTC Template. And here's what your metadata template looks like. It's your basic metadata template. So you can see you've got all these different descriptive fields at your disposal and you can fill those out as complete or incomplete as you like. My suggestion for metadata is to build out a template that suits your needs and keep that template consistent throughout everything you shoot. So in other words, all the photos that we shoot at the Red Sox have this basic same template format, which looks like this. And so every photo that we shoot that gets uploaded to our archive gets uploaded with a descriptive caption, a general description headline, a list of any relevant keywords, our copyright information, and our capture information. And this makes it super easy for us to go into our archive, type in whatever we're looking for, and find it right away. Now what I'm going to do is drop a link below with a download for my basic standard template. Now this is the one that I use and you can use this as a base to get started and you can make your own tweaks based off of that. Once you've got that metadata template built out, it's time to apply that template to your photos. So I've got a folder of photos right here that I shot of a snowy Fenway Park. So I'm going to bring those into Photo Mechanic right here. You're going to highlight all of your photos. So Apple A, select all your photos and you're gonna to go to Image, Metadata, IPTC, Template. And from there, it'll bring up your template and you can build out the information that you need. So the date that I shot this was October 30th, 2020. October 30th, so you basically just fill out all of this info. And for my headline, I will do Fenway Snow. And then my list of keywords, this is super, super important. So these are keywords that I'm going to apply to all of these photos to make sure that they get tagged with these words. So Fenway Park Snow, Fenway Snow, Snow, Weather, Storm. And that's good to start. And then what I'll do if everything looks good is hit apply template to selected. And that will apply that template to all of these photos. So then if I click them one by one, all I have to do is select the photo, 
go to the I tab right here for info, and that will bring up your caption and metadata info. So then what I need to do is just fill out the specific part of the generic caption. So a general view of the field as snow falls. Then I'll add a few descriptive keywords to help out general view, overall, interior. And then I'll move on to the next one. So I just hit save and move on. And then I can continue the process all the way through. Okay, so now I've got every single one of those photos complete with a built out caption and a list of keywords. So you can see as I scroll through, everyone is totally captioned, totally keyworded, got all the information ready to go and ready to be uploaded to our archive. There are a couple tips and tricks that I wanna show you, some insider tips or things that you might not have known before that'll help make your process of adding metadata just a little bit faster. You probably noticed that when I was going through and making those captions, I had to type the same caption over and over again a couple times for the same photo or the same type of photo. Now there's an easy way to fix that and give you a shortcut to work through that process a lot quicker. So this is a general shot of the ballpark, kind of an overall shot of the ballpark. I do have a few of those in this gallery. So what I'm gonna do is just type my caption for one, a general view of the ballpark as snow falls. I'm gonna add my keywords, general view, overall, interior. Then what I'm gonna do is hit this copy button right here. So this is just basic copy and paste. So when you hit this copy button, it will copy this metadata, everything you just typed, and it's got that copied and saved. Then I can just easily go to another photo that has that same caption. So this is another general view shot of the ballpark. And all I have to do is hit paste, and it will add those captions and those keywords right in. So it just makes the process a little bit quicker. I'll show you another example here. We've got two shots of Wally right here. So basically the first one, I'll just type my caption, mascot Wally poses as Santa. I'll add a few keywords in, Wally mascot Santa. And then I wanna apply this to the second photo in this sequence with the same exact caption. So all I have to do is hit copy, then go to the second photo, hit paste, and it applies it right to that photo as well. Okay, now here's another tip that will help you out if you are shooting for multiple different people or you have multiple different templates that you can apply depending on the situation that you're in. You can go down to this lightning tab and this is called your snapshots tab. And basically what this is, is a way to save presets of metadata templates so that you don't have to create that template every time you ingest a new photo shoot or ingest a new card that you need to caption. So as you can see here, I have these saved based on the different type of templates that I need, depending on what I'm shooting at the Red Sox. So I've got my regular Red Sox template. This is my standard template that goes into our archive. And then I also have the Getty one saved as the Getty format. And this is for the photos that I also file to Getty Images, which is a newswire service that collects images from all around the world. They require and they use a different template than the one that we use. So it's nice to just be able to go back and forth between the two, depending on what I'm shooting. And this is a super nice way to manage your templates and switch back and forth in a quick, easy way. What I'm gonna do is just make a basic template for today just to kind of show you an example and how I would save this. So today is January 19th, I'm in Boston. Billy Weiss's YouTube video. So let's say I wanna save this as a snapshot. So basically all I have to do once I have the template ready is hit the lightning bolt, hit save, and I can call it whatever I want. YouTube demo template. I hit okay. And now I've got that saved to my snapshot so I can access that template whenever I want to. You probably noticed that it was pretty annoying for me to have to type in all of these things for every single batch of photos that you are bringing into your computer to caption. So typing all these things like what month is it? What day is it? What day of the week is it? Now there is a workaround for that. And the way to do that is to use the variable code replacements that are offered 
from Photo Mechanic. So I have this code template saved under my snapshots. It's got all these different codes built into the caption. This is actually something that automatically builds in that info for you based on your camera's clock. So assuming you have your camera clock set correctly, it will bring in all of that relevant information, the date, the day, the month, the day of the week, all of that stuff, the time it was shot. And these are called variables and camera bits, which is the company that makes and develops photo mechanic has this list online available of all these different codes and variables that you can type into your IPTC metadata template to make your process a lot more efficient. And this is available online. I've got the link in my description below. So make sure you check this out if you want. So all you have to do is pick which codes that you would want to use and then bring them into your template when you're building and just separate them by the curly brackets. This looks like a bunch of code right now, but when I hit apply template to selected, it brings in the exact day, the exact year, the date that I shot those photos. So it's pretty cool. Now the key is you have to make sure your camera is correct but it just saves you so much time in not having to make sure that you manually enter all of those relevant information. Finally, one last trick. When you ingest a card from your camera, you can apply the metadata automatically as that card gets ingested into the computer. So once you plug the card in, Photo Mechanic will pop up with this window, and there you just choose your destination where you wanna save your images off your card. And then all you have to do is hit this box right here, which says apply metadata template to photos. So that means if that's checked, it will automatically apply whatever IPTC template that you choose to all of the photos that get ingested into your folders. So all you have to do is click your metadata and then you just wanna make sure that you have the right one selected. You just hit load go to wherever you saved your template. I've saved it within the folder. Select that metadata template. You can see that'll bring up everything that you need. And then you just hit ingest. And that will bring all of the photos into Photo Mechanic. And if you click on info, you can see that every raw file that's coming in from your camera is complete with that metadata already. So if you found the video helpful, please let me know, drop a comment down below. Or if you have any questions at all about metadata, I know there's a lot to unpack here. Make sure you drop it as a comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. If not, give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more content coming at you guys in the next few weeks. And I know next time you're in the grocery store, you're gonna be thinking about this. Metadata is going to be haunting you in the grocery store. See you guys.